This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business, from politics, from religion that impact you, the viewer. Today, we are fortunate enough to have a guest who is very much into religion and who embodies the American dream. And her name is Murray Earl. Thank you very much for coming to our show. Thank and you so much. So my question to you, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're director of the Latter-day Saint, which is also known as a Mormon church. What does international director do and what their roles and responsibilities are? Thank you so much for having me. This is a relatively new role for me. Um, I am a, the new director of international affairs and my role spe is specific to the embassies and the ambassadors and diplomats who are based here in Washington. Okay. So this is a satellite office that we have here in Washington, our headquarters, Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the satellite offices that we have here in Washington that outreaches for the, with the, for the church uh, to the international community. And I've often said DC is such a high concentration of such remarkable people. And I think it really embodies that with the ambassadors and diplomats. So a uh, friend to all nations and an ambassador to the ambassadors. Okay, well, that's a good way to put it. But as you know, this is very diverse, uh, the Northern Virginia and the Maryland, the mm -hmm. tri-state area uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, so in addition to interfacing with the ambassadors of the various countries, uh, do you also interface the various the diverse face of America, which oh. is located over here also? Of course. Of course we do. Um, the, the area is, like you say, so diverse and filled with so many interesting people of culture and religions, and our office works with all of it. Um, interfaith, intercultural, um, my specific role is there with the embassies. And, and you, when you talk about the melting pot of Washington, D.C., it really is uh, there and in, in represented from all around the world. I'm a Muslim. My last name is Islam, which could be a curse or a blessing, but I feel it is a blessing mm -hmm. because we always stand for equality, dignity, tolerance and respect for other faiths. We are a bridge builder. We believe in bridge building. Uh, we believe that, that we need to break the barrier of the biases. The lot that unite us, the little that divide us. Our bonds are stronger than the differences that too often drive us apart. You so describe a, it so well. I feel like that's my role. That is your role. That's, that's what I do. Is that, <laughs> is that the philosophy of the Mormon church, what I just said? Oh, very much so. The church has about 15 million members, but it's interesting 15 million, that 15 around, million. And that includes not just the United States, but all over the world. All around the world. But what's interesting is there are more members of the church outside of the United States oh. than inside of the United States. And so I think what you've said really, really tries to embody that. Embody that. Uh, there are a lot of famous people uh, who believe in the, uh, the Mormon church. Uh, many, many people. Um, Mitt Romney, who ran for the uh, United States uh, presidency long, not too long ago. He was a Mormon also. There's a lot of the people. Bill Marriott, who's a famous person, who's well-known, who's a real estate, and there's so many like that. My question to you is, how would you convince me that I need to come to the LDS and to the Mormon church uh, tomorrow or this Sunday? Oh. <laughs> what is your message to me? My message would be worship how you feel. Okay. And worship the way you think you you the conscious that dictates to your own conscience, and that's a very important thing I think for any particular religion. It's within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints that there's a, a tolerance, there's a religious freedom, and I would say, come, be an observer, be participant. You're more than welcome. We open our buildings, we open to all, so and I would do say, you also come. we can also participate in the service as well. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But there's heard, a, much I, singing. There's much that goes on. There's a lot of things going on. Yeah, absolutely, and we it's welcome a, all. It's a, it's, a, it's a finding the common ground, but you can still stand on your ground to, because we all have a shared goals and mm -hmm. shared responsibility. Now, this lighting ceremony um, on the Beltway, I love it. I mean, I, I, I see in the temple mm -hmm. that, that lights up, and, and uh, it, it indeed is a wonderful. So tell them, is, how can somebody attend that, and how they can get hold of the people like yourself who can tell them? Because the, the, the lighting is one of the best oh. in town and how they participate in the ceremony. Oh, uh, this, this is actually one of the churches. And this is the time, this is the Christmas time. It, it is. It, it is the it time is. for it's joy. Celebra celebration, celebration of this season. Of yeah. Celebration. Yeah, and it's really right. a time of giving back. This is what we consider a gift to the Washington, D.C. area, as over 650,000 lights will be illuminated on the grounds. We anticipate a quarter of a million people will see the lights. 
sometime through the month of December, just through that time, that month. And every night there's an illumination just right there at dawn and dusk. And I, um, I have been a part of it for the last number of years as we celebrate the season. And um, through every night there's a cultural performance that is repeated at dctemplelights.lds.org, lists all of the different performers who come and participate. There's community choirs, there's high school performances. So can you go inside the church and witness the, the glory of this wonderful celebration uh, as well as the witness the light? It is open for all. The Temple okay. Visitor Center accommodates, they're, they're typically just in the 30-day period. I want you to think about 30 days, and they're typically so be the first day we start? 80, December, 1st? December the 1st through December January the 1st. 1st. Yeah. And there are nearly 80,000 people that come into the Visitor Center. Over 28,000 people watch the performances. There's a theater, 500 at a time can be... Um, accommodated in the theater and so they bring one group in and one group out and there are many things to see there's uh, trees there's an international nativity scene that is a, an exhibit that is uh, takes into account the international uh, portrayal of the birth of, of Jesus but it does it in their own distinct international way using elements that come from the different countries. Mm. And they use these and then it's put on exhibit and people can walk through and see it. And it's, it's fascinating how one event is, uh, is displayed in a, just a multiple of ways with materials and with uh, marble and with sand. It, it, it's, it's worth watching, it's worth, it's worth seeing. Sounds, like, sounds, sounds pretty good to me. Um, as you know, the audience, uh, a lot of uh, South Asian, mostly Indian Americans, Pakistani American, Afghani American, and so on and so forth. So how do you, uh, church, uh, interface with India, Indian Americans? And do you have uh, um, offices for the, uh, for the Mormon church over there in India also? We and too, how, ma and how many, and there are a lot of uh, Mormon people who follow the traditions the, and, the, and the faith of uh, um, what I can, the Mormon church in, in India? We do. There, we're in over 190 countries, and that really is the global reach of the church. And, and in each country, including India, it's very small, especially compared to the population. But we're proud of those who are there. They, they're natives who sustain the leadership mm -hmm. there. They um, run the church's programs. They run the church's women's association. Mm -hmm. It's the Relief Society that really is its family and faith and bringing relief and mm -hmm. and they are integral into our community as well as those who are there in India so they're the neighbors there so as Ronald Reagan said on the family and faith that there will be mourning in America right so it is a mourning in India correct oh I think it, I, I it, it is it and is. I think it's uh, exciting to watch and there's 43 congregations they have family history centers there that you can research your family history and it's open for all. It's one of those things that family is such a core principle of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. If I remember correctly, uh, people who share your faith and believe people who believe in your faith, uh, they have to go to becoming global ambassador to some part of the world uh, to, to, uh, to make sure that people understand what the Mormon Church is all about. So you have people who go into India also um, every year, there are a lot of people that go from here. They they do. It's uh, not only from the United States, but from uh, other places person. in the world that are there, and and those sometimes in India are sent in other places. Um, and it's a cultural exchange, and it, like you say, it's an, a mini ambassadorship. It is that you have people. In fact, uh, the church sponsors Brigham Young Universities as one of the higher institutions of learning, that education is one of the pillars. And of the 33,000 students on campus in its uh, flagship in Provo, Utah, more than 75% of the student body speaks more than one language. Wow. That's, which, which is just it, uh, it, untouched. It, uh, it does show the diverse face of America, the world, as a yeah. matter of fact. Now, 
you're going to be uh, lighting up this uh, festival lights, and uh, I know a lot of people attend that. So who's going to be the ambassador this time? This time it's the ambassador of Japan. Wonderful. Who will be illuminating the lights with one of our senior church leaders, who's a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, who has spent much of his life in Japan. So I think that there is a match. Um, I know for in 2008, former Ambassador Ronan Sen illuminated uh, the Indian lights. Ambassador. Indian ambassador. So each year of the 39 years, they um, an ambassador illuminates the light. And as you mentioned, Mr. J.W. Marriott Jr. and his wife, Mrs. Donna Marriott, have been the hosts of a, a Donna, festival of that's lights. Not, that's not Mr. Marriott's wife, Donna. That's Donna and J.W. Bill, Bill Marriott. Bill Marriott, yeah. right, right. They have been the host the 39 years. I know Dave it's Marriott legendary. is my neighbor. It's not too oh, far from my right. house. Right Potomac. there in Potomac. Uh -huh. Yeah, I do yeah. know them. They're yeah. wonderful, wonderful people. They have given so much to our country and our community. And uh, well, This is a service that they've given for a very, uh, very that's, long that's time. That's what I love about the Mormon Church. Uh, they, they, they give back to the to, the, to not only our country, but our community, get engaged mm -hmm. in the community. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what are the guiding principles of the Mormon church that binds us together? What are the values of the Mormon oh, church? There, I'm sure there are a lot of them. There are, there are. I think some of those things that I think are so core and central include those that I think embody our women's organization and our ministerial outreach. And it really has to do with faith, family, relief, um, religious freedom. I think those are core principles. Um, I think they embody those basic moral values of honesty and charity. You talk about volunteerism. And, and just last, last year, 25 million hours of volunteer hours given just to our disaster relief Wonderful program. Thing. What about so refug it, refugees and things like that? Yeah, we're we're engaged in that it affects our own people. Yes, it it, it um, we're a part of that. We and not only here in the United States, but all, all over, the, over world. the world. And we're concerned. One of our senior church leaders was a refugee himself many years ago, and he tells his he story. He came to this nation as a refugee. Lo uh, he he's German. Yeah. by descent but if his, his story is compelling it is and and What's there's his story a that? his a president dieter f uchtdorf is his name and he shares his story as he talks about being a young man having to flee from one border to another and wondering if he would be together with his family again and so there's great sympathy for what's going on mm. in the world the church's women's organization um our president uh, our global president started a program of inviting people to be, it's, I, I was a stranger and you took me in and that's part of it. And figuring out what, what has happening in your neighborhood, what's happening across the street from you. Perhaps it's taking someone to the grocery store and, um, and, sh and doing some basic life skills that might be very difficult. It might be scary for someone who's who's not only here in the United States, but like I say, throughout the world, throughout the 190 countries that the church is involved in. So the, there are a lot of violence uh, that's erupted uh, for the last uh, week and so in our country. The country that you and I love, love dearly and care a lot about it. Because we are American and we always believed there's no place in this country for hatred and bigotry and violence. I'm sure Mormon church subscribed to that notion. Are you concerned about what's going on in America these days? I think everyone's concerned. Everyone's concerned for what's going on here. Everyone's, I think, concerned going on abroad. And I think really it affects individuals. It affects families and how they live and how they practice their own faith, their own conscience, and all of those things that go along with it. And I think that's one of the core principles of the so what exactly gospel of the Jesus Mormon, Christ. So what exactly the Mormon church is doing to, uh, to make sure that we can get rid of this violence, we can get rid of this hatred and bigotry and bring inclusive and a stronger America that we can all be proud of because we can all work together. I think it really starts kind of as, as, in knowing who your neighbors are. Yes. I think there's a, that, that I think when you serve and you're part of the community and you know who's living next to you, I think those boundaries, those cultures, those, those um, differences really come come down that they you know your neighbors and i think on that local level introducing one another and in service 
in your neighborhood, in your community, in your, in your church community, in your um, garden club, in whatever you're involved in, I think there's a place that brings hope. And I think we can believe that there is hope and I think we can work for it and we can live for it. And I think that embodies the teachings of Jesus Christ. So have, is the leader of your community, your church, and the people in Utah, have you spoken out about what's going on right here in America these days in terms of the bigotry and hatred? And uh, we need to bring people together. The hope lives, hope floats, hope never dies, hope dies last. I think that's the message of hope the teaching, teachings of the Jesus Christ is that hope is still alive. Hope and I alive. think we can live for that. And I think, and, and I have think Have anybody spoken about it against what's going on here? In terms I think of the they wanting? always have spoken about okay. it. It's a message that I think is loud and clear. So if I go to church on Sunday, would I hear a sermon uh, about, uh, about uh, this kind of thing that's going on in America? You have res moral responsibility to make sure you speak out against the uh, hatred and bigotry and so on, so what's happening in America. I think this that- is a great country in the earth. I think, I think that message it will be communicated in every- Level. Level, every, every meeting. And I think that's the, one of the purposes of, re of religion is to bring hope, to bring optimism, to work for it. What are, what's required to feel that in your personal life? What is that to bring it to your family, your young children, your parents, your grandparents? I think that's something that I've always appreciated about the faith is that I think that there, ev there is a plan for each one of us that God has prepared and that we get to, to figure out what that plan is for each of us and to live with hope and optimism. I think those are, those are pillars and you'll hear that message in and church America meetings. America has always been a beacon of hope, aspirations and dream. My story can only happen in America, across the Atlantic Ocean to attain, achieve the American dream, right? And I want to continue on that journey so others can also attain the American dream. If they're successful, all of us are successful, America is successful, and the world is successful. Is, it, is those some kind of uh, things that you embody? I, uh, go ahead. Uh, is that uh, some kind of thing that church embody, uh, these, this notion? I think that, in, I think not only does it embody it, but I think it preaches it. It preaches it. Pre it. it preaches it. Yes. And it preaches it not only here, but I think natively, wherever you are, to build up your community, to find success, to find peace, mm -hmm. to find happiness. And oftentimes that comes in various forms, but it comes typically with family. It comes with um, loving one another. It comes with Again, service service to your community and service to each other and okay. service to your country, wherever you live, especially knowing there are more members outside. That's something we encourage out, outside the United States as well. So where are the largest uh, in terms of the in denominations of the Mormon church in the world? Uh, obviously, Asia, which if includes India, China, Pakistan, Bangladesh, is probably two-thirds of the population of the world. Right, right. Uh, correct. Uh, uh, so where are you stronger and which part of the world you're very strong there and you have a lot of people there and they, they, uh, they believe in what you believe in it uh, and subscribe to the faith of the Mormon church? Well, like I say, 190 countries, but they range. In, oh, I, I in, would say so. It, and so uh, over a million members in Mexico, over Mexico. a million members in Brazil, over 600,000 in the Philippines. So Latin America so, and the Philippines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh, Europe? Europe, we're, we're there, we're present. We, um, so many of our ancestors come from of Europe. Of course. Mine come from Switzerland and Sweden. Um, they, they're f some of our senior church leaders, French and Danish was the first um, country that had uh, its translation of scripture into, because there were so many people from Denmark that the church, some. It, 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 it's there, it's present and, and, and growing. So for the audience who wants to get hold of you and want to participate in the sermon mm -hmm. or go to the church or become an active participant uh, as a part of the community um, that for the Mormon church, and uh, how did they get hold of you? What did they have to do to talk with you? Oh, 
we're, we're in so many places that it's not hard to find. We're down the street, oftentimes we're your neighbors and you're in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're contributing to the community that's abroad. I was a stranger is one way. Just serve is uh, also a d another way. We're independent of religious affiliation. You can find service opportunities and join together and make those communities stronger. There are churches that you're welcome to come and observe and to be a part of without um, ob observing the, all of the tenets of the faith. I think sometimes you just need an uplifting message. And I think a lot of people go to church for that. I know I do. Okay. So what differentiates you in terms of your messaging and your message and in your faith than the other Christian faiths are? Um, I think we, we come together in so sure, many ways sure. with other Christian faiths, and I think working together makes the message even stronger. Sure. I think our doctrine is different our, uh, in, in some ways, but I think what really binds us together are those ways that we can come together on the ways that we are, the, are similar, mm -hmm. and that we have a divinity within us, and we have uh, an ability to shape and influence the circumstances that we're a part of. Difficult, or if, or if you're flying high, it's one of those things you can contribute to and make, make a significant change just by, by being a, a part and coming together with each other. Very well said. So, so when is this festival, the lighting festival starts in December 1st? December the 1st to January 1st. 3rd, uh, January, January 1st. 1st. Uh -huh. So one month. Yep. I want the audience to go out and look at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, lighting. It's stunning. It's, it's stunning. truly it's a good stunning. It's a true stu it is a stunning. It's a beautiful. It's a wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and this is uh, also will open up your heart and soul to the spirituality of the Mormon church where they believe in it. Yeah. So Spirit of giving. Sp that's very well said. Thank you very much for thank coming you. here. I appreciate it very thank much. Thank you so much. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week and thank you for watching.